Lovely to see you. And thank you. Thank you for coming yesterday. No, I don't because I felt that it's my duty as an Indian to voice my anguish, my apprehension at what's happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, before coming, I was just looking through the pages. Uh, there's a big book I have, your grandfather's name. Achha. And I was looking through that and uh, I know you, this 2,800 kilometers is nothing. You've walked through sweat, tears and blood, literally. And we have seen history happen from the inner circle. I've watched it from the outer circle. So walking with you, if I don't come with you, it's not fair. My nephew's a photographer. So I said, listen, I want to give a little present to my friend Kamal Hassan. And I said, give me a picture, one of your pictures uh, as a gift to him. Uh, so I want you to guess what he came up with. <laughs> what, what picture do you think he gave me? I don't know. But... Come, let's go and see it. <laughs> oh, it's here. Tells you what Kamal is, right? And so this is what he gave me. This is what he came up with. Oh. <laughs> oh, he shot this? He shot this. And that's for you. Because it, it tells us your approach, your attitude to life. And you. the fact that you're a great Indian and a great Tamil. Thank you. And we're proud of you. Thank you. It looks Beautiful. nice, Beautiful. huh? I'm quite interested in how you see what is going on in India. Of course, an Indian person, but also a Tamil person. Because the view from South India often looks very different. It, it is. Than the view from North I'm India. sure it is the same from Azam or Meghalaya. The same, exactly. At the capital. We forget history and we are only agitated by the topical mm -hmm. uh, or recent happenings. I talk a lot about Gandhiji now. Mm -hmm. It is. Not from the, right from the beginning. My mm -hmm. father was a congressman, mm -hmm. but uh, my environment made me a bitter critic of Gandhiji yeah. when I was in my teens. My father did not say, he said, just read history. I think yeah. you're talking from today. Yeah. yeah, but today matters is my yeah. question. He's a lawyer and he didn't argue with me mm -hmm. on this case. Mm -hmm. Around 24, 25, I discovered Gandhiji on my own and uh, over the years, exponentially, I've become a fan. And that's me, to explain myself. You, you, to actually correct yourself and yeah. say sorry, that's why I made Hey Ram, mm -hmm. right. a film, where I played a parallel assassin, wow. wanting to wow. kill Gandhiji. And as he goes near, nearer to the person and the truth, he changes but it's too late. Somebody else does the job that he wanted to do, right. but he had changed his mind. That's the story of Hiram. So did he, you came up with the idea? Yes. That is my way of saying sorry to my Bapu. Excellent. That's quite a sort of sophisticated, intelligent way of looking at the problem. Yeah, because I have to take the owners of all the crimes, including yeah. what happened in your family. We let it happen. But I think inside what you're saying is hatred is actually blindness and misunderstanding. Yes, and the worst form of criticism is an assassination. I, I think yeah. that's very cheap. Yeah. And it's, that's a, it's a coward. A coward does that only, because he has no other way to fight. But that cannot be the answer. So what's your view then of the violence and the hatred that is being uh, spread in the country? I mean, I view it as a consequence of the fear that is being spread in the country. No, this is actually a synthetic, reproduced... Manufactured. Manufactured thing. I don't think so because going to Kerala, more than Tamil Nadu, you'll find amity prevails. Yeah. Unless you doctor it. Yeah, yeah. You can do it from either side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there are more sides to it than just Hindu and Muslim. Yeah. We have to look at all that and uh, understand that this country will flourish only with this plurality. As a person who loves Tamil Nadu, loves the Tamil people, whenever I go there, I try to understand slightly better, you know, what exactly is the Tamil idea, right? And, well, okay. So as, as somebody who, you know, is looking at it from far, 
what is actually, what does it mean to be Tamil? I know that the Tamil language is very important, it, but what, it, what does it, it actually it, it mean? It means the same as want, wanting to be a Maharashtrian yeah. or a Telugu or a Malayali. We all have a pride, but I must say something about Tamil Nadu. They always feel that it's an island mm -hmm. with parochial mindset and uh, language chauvinism. Mm -hmm. Everybody is proud about their language, but I can tell you, you can go to a village, any village or town, my town, and just stand in the middle of the road and shout, Nehru, a dark man will turn around, yeah. or he'll say, Bose. Yeah. Somebody will turn around and he doesn't look anything like yeah. uh, Nehru ji or uh, Bose ji. Yeah. And they'll turn, you'll find Gandhi, many Gandhi. Hmm. That is the mindset. And at a particular point, they felt there was apathy from the center. Mm -hmm. That happens every time. It will happen with every government. They are now unhappy with what is happening now. But that's not permanent if you could approach it like you're doing it now. The reason why I want to celebrate your walk mm. is the reaching out to the people and lending the ear. Mm. Instead of uh, standing on a podium and lecturing. Yeah. That's commendable from your side. But my experience when I go to Tamil Nadu, right, is that they express themselves in a very passionate, yes. it's different expression. So if you go to Maharashtra, people show affection, but the way the Tamils show affection is something completely different. I get that feeling when I go there and, and I always wonder, what is that exactly? How does it? Why such um, strong eff affection or strong expression or so, so it's, passionate? It, it, it's part of the culture. It's, it's a very old culture. And uh, they've seen wars, they've seen battles. They've, they've learned a lot from Jainism, yeah. Buddhism. Yeah. It, it, it's a mixture of everything. That kind of uh, affection was enjoyed by Kamaraji, yeah. MGR, yeah. all those leaders. They are moved to tears, yeah. laughter, screaming yeah, yeah. when they see the man of the... I think it, around the country it's like that, with variations. And also the, the Tamil language is very important to them. Yes, important. I think even uh, non-religious, godless people mm -hmm. celebrate Tamil and worship Tamil. So you said you've got... Um, you're doing this fashion business and so you yes. know a lot about what is going on in the rest of the world. How do you see uh, the United States, China, these countries? Where do you see India's place in all this? Nowhere less than them, yeah. but we should walk hmm. the talk. Yeah. Like you're doing, every Indian must walk the talk. Hmm. Hmm. I want to be, or simply resigning yourself to calling it a third world country. Yeah. You can't do that anymore. That's blasphemy. <laughs> and, and, and you said, in our earlier discussion that production has a lot to do with it. The ability to produce something and yes. sell it outside India, not just in India. Yeah, we can't have a toddy mindset mm -hmm. because you can't bottle it. Mm -hmm. It has to be had right. then and there. We are in G20, hmm. not because of one government, yeah. successive governments. Yeah. And whatever good they could do, that has accumulated hmm. and come to this day. Yeah. Yeah. So we are aware of that and uh, you were talking about China. I want you to say more. The security of the country, both internal and external, yeah. your opinion on it. I was speaking to some ex-servicemen the other day and I was mentioning to them that security today in the 21st century, it's not good enough just to say, okay, what do our borders look like, right? Because security today has become a holistic thing. You don't necessarily get attacked from the borders. You can get attacked from inside. Okay. You can get attacked by cyber weapons. You can get attacked by, uh, you know, use of your media. So in the 21st century, one has to have a global view about security. And that's where I think our government has completely gone and miscalculated. We constantly hear about what is going on on the border. And the fact of the matter is that China has taken 2,000 kilometers of our territory, okay, square kilometers. And frankly, we haven't said anything. The Prime Minister hasn't said anything. The military has clearly said that they're sitting in our territory. But the Prime Minister said nobody has come. This sends a very clear message to China. And the message is, we can do whatever we want. And India will not respond. Right? And in fact, in some of the conversations that they are having with our military, they're actually making 
the statement that look your prime minister himself has said we are not in your territory so what is the conversation about so that's one aspect of it yeah to them it will look like we are whistling in the dark to allay fear yeah no and looking and, at somewhere no, else imagine imagine if you are the leader right and uh, your forces and my forces are negotiating and your forces are coming and saying you are in my territory and then i say no no but your leader has said we are not so it destroys the entire negotiation position of yes, india yes. Right? so that's one aspect of it the second aspect of it is how conflict has been transformed and conflict has been transformed because earlier you fought on a border now you fight everywhere right so you fight by shutting down power stations you can fight by attacking the railway system you can fight by militarily attacking you can and fight the oldest trick is to yeah. contaminate water border yeah so you can you can do that so the single most important thing in the 21st century is that a country has internal cohesion that there's harmony in the country that people are not fighting that there's peace in the country and the country has a vision the point is not going to war right the point is being in a position where you cannot be attacked and there's a link between a weak economy a confused nation without vision hatred and anger and the chinese sitting in our territory because they know that we are dealing with internal matters internal confusion in an internal lack of harmony and so they can just go in and do whatever they want so that that's one element of the problem the other huge element of the problem is what has happened in ukraine right and essentially what the russians have done in ukraine is they've said look we will not accept that the ukrainians have a strong relationship with the west and they've basically told the ukrainians if you have a strong relationship with the west we will alter your geography and that is the exact same principle that can be applied in india what the chinese are saying to us is be careful with what you're doing because we will alter your geography we will enter ladakh we will enter arunachal and what i can see is them building a platform for that type of an approach so as an indian person i don't want to be somebody who's warmongering but i would like i'd like our country to be aware that there are real problems on the border and those problems on the border are connected to what is going on inside our country when indian fights indian when the economy doesn't work when there's joblessness our external opponents can take advantage of that situation yeah, so that's that's it's broadly an opportune moment yeah. of distracted yeah so one of the things that we've you know constantly telling our government is talk about it if you want to do, don't want to talk through the media at least talk to the opposition we understand these things we might be able to help you advise you you know bounce ideas off us but they just don't listen so is that is the approach that you know we understand everything the other aspect of it which you touched on is that frankly there's no one who can compete with china i do not believe that on production on as far as the economics is concerned i do not believe that the west can take on the chinese i believe that india can take on the chinese we have the population we have the that. population we have the people what do you need to take on the chinese you need a young population you need large numbers of people you need a large educated base compared to china our population is younger exactly right and if you see the west right uh, and you know this might be a bit controversial but they've got too much they're flabby they're living in opulence they uh, live on they and live and they are outsourced and they outsource right whereas our people they know what a struggle is they understand uh, difficulty So I think as an Indian person I see a huge opportunity for India to become like China the producer of the world right and of course the west has a space which is high end manufacturing high technology etc etc which they're very good at they'll dominate and we should try and challenge them on that but I do not think they can compete with China on the large scale manufacturing yeah. blue collar work and I think that's that's the tragedy that we are walking on these streets you walk with us and all our children are saying we are unemployed when in fact we could have huge amounts of employment through our agricultural system through sort of manufacturing the constant neglect of agriculture is uh, disgruntled many tamilians they have voiced they came here 
they didn't even get an audience. Yeah. India has skills and it has skills everywhere, right? I always say that the next to Satyagraha is the skill set development Absolutely. for India. Right. Because making thousands of lawyers who won't get a job, thousands of engineers exactly. who won't find a job, instead if you develop their skills, they can have their degree but pursue their passion. Instead of me talking about other subjects generally, let me talk about where I come from, the film industry. But the number of training facilities, 200 jobs in, in a film, and there's no ITI for that. So, so, so what it is, right, is actually a disrespect of skills. You will not respect the person's skill and then say, okay, as the nation, how do we empower this person's skills? So I give you the example of Bellari, right? Which is the jeans capital of India. Now, Bellari should be exporting jeans to the rest of the world, should be exporting different types of jeans, should be innovating on jeans. Right? Bellari has been shut down because of demonetization and wrongly applied GST. And you've literally taken a hub which could challenge the Chinese across the world in making jeans, and you've destroyed it. It used to have four and a half lakh people working there, it now has 50,000. Like something like what you're doing with Khadi, right? I mean, who would know that that's a Khadi jacket? Nobody. Right? Uh, yeah, but more than the publicity of it, the reach of it. Exactly. And uh, Americans are loving it. And, and then you got, you got the history of Khadi, right? Because if you start to say, well, this is Khadi from the Indian freedom movement, this is made by yes. Indian people by hand, this is what fought a superpower, you can make a beautiful story out of it. Yes. Yeah. And it, it's not done in a modern factory. Yeah. It's done by people sitting in villages yeah. Yeah. and handmade. Exactly. You know, it, uh, I'm very happy and honored to be uh, sort of partnering with these people who've been neglected. They're almost on the verge of closing down and going back. Thanks to GST. So how many people now are, are working there? We have started, like we have not started a full-fledged tailoring system. Mm -hmm. Because we don't have, we only have 12 outlets and mm -hmm. we can supply with a number of tailors. And, but the number of uh, uh, weavers mm. are many. Right. They are in Telangana, Karim Nagar. Uh, in, uh, we are uh, sourcing it. We, we are going even to Kutch and other places so that we can Right. Bring India together. So that's uh, it was very nice. It was very nice of you to come. I must say, I, I you know, with all the situation and the BJP and sort of the the ability they have to coerce, I think it's also a brave thing. You know, that's why no, uh, I think that's why he that's why he gave uh, <laughs> he came up that? with that idea of the picture. No, no, we it's have not easy. Uh, uh, I'm glad he thinks of me that way, but I still remember the speech by Gandhiji when he said, shake the lion's mane, <laughs> for which he was incarcerated. So we, we have the strength and ability, but I'm, I'm happy that you're meeting people, practicing jujitsu, <laughs> walking miles and miles and miles. It's, it's nice. And because you're doing exactly what Gandhiji did, to understand the nation before yeah. fighting for it. No, it's actually, it's quite a fantastic experience. I remember walking from Tamil Nadu into Kerala. It's completely different. Yeah. And as you said, it's changed, but then it's the same. So there's huge commonality and then there's huge difference. That's the individuality of it. That's the plurality that we yeah. should not yeah. lose exactly. at all. Yeah. And I think a lot of what we traditionally have is also the artisan, the small and medium person, you know, the little clusters who have huge skill, but they are sort of hidden away, hidden treasures, so to speak. Yeah, I think it's very important that a government in position should bolster, um, like farmers, yeah. uh, during the uh, Gaja calamity. For them, after some time, party affiliations don't matter. Yeah. The calamity yeah. that they're facing is... The pain is, is the, the most important thing. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And politicians always go and talk about the next election. Yeah. And their trajectory is towards that. And that they don't like. Yeah. They don't. They can't tend to take their eyes off it, yeah. the politicians. I find that. And I get criticized a lot, you know, sometimes, where they're like, oh, you know, he's not, you know, he's not election-centric. I mean, um, I think 
of course one has to fight elections one has to be uh, in politics one has to take them seriously but there's also another role of people there's a role of bringing people together of listening of being affectionate you know that role i think is very important role what we have done through our party is that simply sort of wipe the dust away from the gram sabhas mm -hmm. and brought it back into now the, it's happening because mm -hmm. we are attending and now we want to take it into the towns i think people should participate in politics mm -hmm. not necessarily electoral politics yeah. only exactly but they must have a firm say yeah. that politicians will have to understand it's not all about number crunching that they'll have to answer certain things and they people should also feel that i can vent hmm. or complain i can say something and politicians should also feel that i i can take some punishment you know i he he shouting at me okay no problem i did something wrong i go and listen to what he's doing what he's saying i think that's you know people don't like criticism i think uh, i think criticism is a good thing i think we are a very young democracy still in spite of 75 years mm -hmm. the reminiscence of uh, the monarchy is so still in our mind yeah 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 no, that's very that's a profound thing you've said it's true it's still uh, they they want loyalty yeah. and politicians who are in power want to somewhere behave like a yeah. king because we are not it's not too far behind in history that we yeah. had princely states 70 years yeah but i think if you look a lot of sort of our chief ministers and leaders the approach is that of a king you know you look you like unilateral decisions i will do whatever i want not taking into account what people feel not listening i think there's quite a lot of that yeah and they are offended when you call them a civil servant yeah i'm not a civil servant yeah i i am in position i have power but that's what we are ultimately it should be a position of honor rather than exactly position to usurp yeah the trusty idea of mahatma gandhi over the time i'm looking for people who are at least a semblance of hmm. that in them because it's unique is is a tall international figure yeah and that we realize <laughs> when he's not there well anyway i don't i won't keep you no no keep i'm you. keeping it's, you it's, it's lovely it. lovely to see you and whenever you're in delhi you know next time yeah. maybe we go and have a meal or something yeah sure yeah, sure yeah i'd love to do that and i'd like you to look into our thing i've sent i will i will i'll give you i'll give you my and your your measurement i will 100% uh, we'd like to yeah. <laughs> dress you up okay i'll do that <laughs> thank, you. Thank, thank you thank you for the time thank you